The Prophecy of Enoch Jude 1 verse 14 to 15 And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. This wonderful, inspirational, divinely given passage of scripture written by Jude announces to me one of the most glorious events in the biblical calendar of prophecy. By the gift of word of knowledge, the prophecy of Enoch was revealed to Jude. Enoch was one of the patriarchs of faith in the Bible. He had a testimony that he walked with God by faith until he was translated Hebrews 11 verse 5. The walk of Enoch with God was not just limited to the fact that he never tasted death. The climax of his walk with God is seen in the fact that his faith yet speaks. By faith Enoch had the privilege of peeping into God's mind to see the things which God had prepared for the world. He was the first to ever prophesy about the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. True prophecies are received from heaven, a realm where time is not a barrier. The revelation of saints will surely come to fulfillment irrespective of how long it would take in the earth realm. Enoch's prophecy can be likened to seeing the end from the beginning, for he was just the seventh generation from the inception of the human race. Yet, he spoke about the events that would take place thousands of years later. The center of his prophecy was that Jesus would return with his saints. The wonderful thing about the Bible is that it contains the great joy for Christian expectancy for the future. All of the things that the future holds for God's people are foretold by the prophetic writers of the Bible. And the hidden gem of prophecy we will be looking at is the second coming of Jesus as prophesied by Enoch. The prophecy about the second coming of Christ is not false. Men have foretold it by the divine revelation at different times. There are several persons who find it hard to believe that Christ would return. Even some believers are beginning to wax cold in their hope of his coming. The word of God remains true and will surely come to pass at the fullness of time. The reason we think that Christ is delayed in his return is that we live in the realm governed by time. Apostle Peter explained this in 2 Peter 3 verse 8 and 9. But do not forget one thing, my dear friends. There is no difference in the Lord's sight between one day and a thousand years. To him the two are the same. The Lord is not slow to do what he has promised, as some think. Instead, he is patient with you because he does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants all to turn away from their sins. God always keeps his promises. The prophecy of Enoch about the return of the Lord with 10,000 saints was confirmed by John, the beloved. 
during his revelation on the island of Patmos. Revelation 19 relates what the event would look like. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. This particular revelation fulfills the same purpose as that of the prophecy of Enoch, whereas Jude re-echoed the prophecy of Enoch by the gift of word of knowledge, John's revelation confirmed it. So, we have enough witnesses in the Bible that Christ would return with the saints. Apostle Paul also prayed by inspiration for the believers in Thessalonica in 1 Thessalonians 3 verse 13, so that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. The prophecy of Enoch the seventh from Adam, and the prophecy of the Apostle Paul, and the prophecy of John the Revelator all align to tell us of the second coming of the Lord Jesus and his saints. Who is this one that is described to be coming with all his saints? He is revealed in the book of Revelation. Revelation 1 verse 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave him to show his servants. The whole Bible reveals Jesus Christ to us, but no book quite reveals him to us like the book of Revelation. In the book of Revelation, the Lord Jesus Christ wants his church to know who he is, because the only way to the Father is through him. If come through any other way, you come in as a thief and a robber. The Lord Jesus is revealed in the book of Revelation. He is revealed in Revelation 1 verse 18. I am the living one. I was dead and now look. I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. He is the risen king the living one. He is no longer coming as a baby. He is no longer on the cross. He is no longer on the grave. But he is the living one who has the keys of death and Hades. He is revealed in Revelation 19 verse 11. And I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge. He is revealed in Revelation 22 verse 13, I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end, the first and the last. This means it all started with him, and it will all consummate with him. That he has always been here, in eternity past, he were here, forever here, before anything was created, he was here, before the earth, before the universe, before the angels were created, Lord Jesus Christ was here. And it is this, Lord Jesus, that Enoch speaks of returning with his saints. Ultimately, we know from scriptures that Christ will definitely return for and with the saints. The reason for the seeming delay in his coming is that he lives in the realms of eternity where time is never a barrier and he is patient with sinners, giving them an opportunity to come to him. The delayed coming of Christ is therefore not out of slackness, but of mercy and time of appointment. 
as believers, what should be of concern to us is not when Christ will return, but our preparation for his coming. There are several prophecies in the scriptures which have been fulfilled. This gives us hope and assurance that those that have not been fulfilled will come to pass at their appointed time. All we need to do as believers is to position ourselves rightly with God so that we can be partakers in the glorious event of the second coming of Christ. Make sure you subscribe to the new Line of Judah Prayer channel. Click the link in the description.